Welcome back to fpvguy.com. Today we have with us a QRX350 Pro from Valkyra. The Pro designates that this is the hugely improved version of last year's 3X or X350 quad from Valkyra. Last year was Valkyra's first 350 size, 300 size multi-copter. This year they have made an enormous amount of improvements. So thank you to Valkyra Helicopter Supply for arranging me getting one of these to test and I'm gonna start by making a built video. I have downloaded the quick start guide and I have rewritten the entire quick start guide to my English so it's a little more clear than chi translated Chinese English. Um, that can be downloaded from my website. So look in the description here below the video and go to the webs, click on the link to download the PDF with the translated refined instruction guide and follow along with me. This video is going to be particularly useful. We are going to discuss things related to starting the use of this quad. So if you are thinking about buying one of these quads, you may want to watch it all the way through. If you just got one and haven't built it yet, watch it all the way through. With that said, let's get to it. You have been warned. And the parts and the prices I'm mentioning here, I have found on ValkyraHelicopterSupply.com. Dave is a U.S supplier importer of these and the great thing about buying from a US importer of course is you can pick up the phone call him and say hey Dave this isn't working and he's gonna work with you anyway this is the box what he sent us here is what I call the real estate agent special it is ready to fly basically you can take this box put it together charge it and go shoot yourself a real estate video this is all you need what it contains is, of course, the quadcopter. It comes with a Devo 7 F7 here. It comes with a brushless gimbal for smooth, elegant video. And it comes with Valkyra's video camera called the iLook. So let's crack this open and get to it. I'm going to leave this box as decoration. In here is the center of attention, of course, the quad. This is this year's version, comes with a quick mount for the gimbal. It is hugely improved the build. And on the side, you'll immediately notice a little door for a USB cable. This is so you can update the controller inside, and this is one of the major improvements this year. Valkyra is the first company I'm aware of, of high volume mainstream suppliers of these things that have chosen to use APM flight controllers for their quads. APM is an open source, a high quality flight controller, and APM allows you to make waypoint flying so you can load 20, 50 waypoints into this, put it out, hit go, it's gonna take off and it's gonna fly its path and come back and land. This is way more advanced than what we're gonna talk about, but that is one of the things that happens when you throw an advanced controller in here. So just by doing this, the value of this quad is really good because let's have prices before we get started real quickly. I looked at ValkyraHelicopterSupply.com and here's what I found. The BNF, which the quad, the charger, and a battery, cost $389. That is today in May 2014. And so there's a $150 flight controller in here. So that's really only $250 for the quad and battery and charger. That's a great value. Let's add the gimbal and the F or the Devo 7 controller. And you're looking at about $600. And finally, if we step it up to the real estate agent special, Video Maker Deluxe, you're looking at the F7, the 
gimbal and the eye look and you're looking at about trip or $850. The value with this controller is indis indisputable really, but it's, I, I like it, I like it. Let's get on with it. No more prizes, we're gonna build. Taking this one out, here is a battery for the quad. We're gonna need that in a minute. This is enormous compared to last year. It is twice the volume and it goes supposedly about 25 minutes. Here is another centerpiece, the F7 radio with a built-in video monitor. I think that is a brilliant move for, you don't need anything else. This gives you a screen to watch your video. Here's a battery for the radio. There's a number of cables down here. Here's a USB cable to upgrade or program your, con your flight controller. And there is a, there's an other USB cable. And here is a trainer cable that allows you to have a buddy plug into the back of your radio <clears throat> so somebody with more flight experience than you have or you can help train somebody else with this cable. It also comes with a strap and put it around your neck so that if something happens, you don't drop your radio and all of a sudden you're flying up there and your radio on the ground. Here is the charger, the one you plug this battery into and that's called a balance charger and you can also use this charger to charge the battery for the radio. I'm not gonna go into details with that right now as I'm sure you understand how that works. So, that goes out of the way. Down here, we have the next beautiful part, the gimbal. This gimbal will fit a GoPro camera out of the box and it's balanced for the 80 gram GoPro. Here it is also in this particular kit is in, this is the everything you need kit is included the ILO camera. The ILO camera has a antenna for 5.8 on the back so you don't have to do anything other than plug this together and now you have video down you can see what you're shooting. There is nothing to it so this setup is for people that don't want to mess with it want to get up and start shooting some real estate video. Let's put this down. Here's the thing I'm getting a kick out of decorative caps that yes it says decorative caps they are not decorative this is the little things that hold the propellers in place so let's not lose the decorative caps okay here is the landing gear and finally we need to get ourselves some propellers it comes with a total of eight propellers we need oops this is all the same we need two kind a set of each kind there we go. And then down here is the toolkit. Oh, and here's a gimbal fixer. This is the generic gimbal mount. So you can mount this gimbal on a regular quad, any other brand basically. That goes over there. So we have propellers, we've got tools, and let's take the quad. And the next we're gonna grab the quick start guide. Here we go. And like I said, this thing is available on my website, so go ahead and download it. And anyway, the first thing we're supposed to do is install the legs, and it says prepare the legs. So it's, here we go. Let's look for the one with the compass. The compass is the little thing down on the leg here, and that goes with the red, white, and blue cable. So having found the red, white, and blue cable, there's also four or three little white cable things here. Let's show them to you real quickly. There they are. Those are the gimbal controllers. I didn't spend a lot of time showing it to you because we're going to come back to these as we install them. Uh, they're not fitting through. Kind of noodle them through. That you want to noodle these through because you don't want to hurt any of these cables. If you do, you can kind of guess this won't be working well. There we go. So up here is the compass and it plugs in here. Notice this little slit right there. The cable goes under that and then into there. So the first thing I'm going to do is stick this right in here under that little slit to kind of keep it from frailing around. 
I'm gonna try to find out how this goes on. There, it is in place. Then we're gonna take our not so decorative caps and in that bag is also some of the screws. One of the things I love about the Kira setup is they're using finger screws. You do not need tools for this. So if you're going backpacking, this is brilliant because it's so easy. You can put this entire quad together pretty much without a lot of tools. So we have this. What they envision to do with this cable, the legs are hollow. And what Valkyra suggests is to stick them in here and use a piece of tape. And they actually include a piece of foam tape in the tools and parts kit here. I'm not going to put it on today. I usually don't. But I usually just use a piece of white tape to just tack these things in place. The antenna goes up in this hollow leg. And notice there's another antenna for the other leg. The beautiful thing about having two antennas is as you fly out and turn around, you never risk losing connection with your quad. So here we go. We're going to put the other set of legs on. Is that a leg or is it a set of legs? There it is. Okay, there we go. And we take some of these finger screws. That one is down. And that one is down. And here it is, in the back here is the power for the gimbal. So here's the gimbal control cables and here's the gimbal power. Having that, we're gonna turn this around. And the next thing Valkyra suggests to do is installing the propellers. Now, we may want to take them off later. I'm not going to to save some time, so I'm just going to raise ahead and grab some of these propellers here. Now, these are really, really nice. They, I've seen cheesy propellers and I've seen nice ones. And I've got to tell you, these are a nice set of propellers. Interestingly, this quad fly, flies a lot quieter than some quads. I'm not sure if it's a propeller, but the Valkyra quads are very quiet. Now, before I install this, I'm gonna show you how to balance it. And with me, I have the Dubro propeller balancer. It is two big rolling wheels here and an axis that can run freely in the middle. You can see how that just spins. So to get the propeller on here, we have to remove the little rubber band put all that down here, we pull this off. This propeller, by the way, has a little notch inside so that it doesn't rotate on the motor. We're gonna enjoy that later. We're gonna stick that in with a cone into the big hole. It's flat on this side, so we're gonna turn the cone around, put the flat side in, and then the spring comes back on, the disc, and there we go. And let's see. Well, there's no doubt that one blade is heavier than the other blade, so let's deal with that. I have a little piece of tape. We don't need very much. I usually use gaff tape. You can use whatever tape you want. Let's try to just kind of put it right about here halfway. You can see where it's sitting. And now let's try to put it back horizontal. That was not enough, so we need to come out a little further. Let's try that again. There we go. So what I do is I have it right here. I'm gonna wrap it around the front leading edge so that it doesn't blow off. And let's just check the vertical. The vertical is good. I always do the vertical and if it start going to one of the sides, we're gonna put some tape right here on the side of the hub. But we already checked and this one is good. So we're gonna remove the propeller and I'm gonna to try to not lose the pipes from, from the Dubro, and I do believe Valkyra Helicopter Supply.com have these. <laughs> Basically, the Dubro propeller balancer is the standard way of doing this. Now, what we're going to do is look at the propeller, and you see there's an arrow right there. This arrow shows counter clockwise. So, we're going to look on the quad, and we're looking here. This arrow shows clockwise. Right here, we're looking for counterclockwise. So
So we're finding that on this arm and this propeller are matching. So what we're going to do is look for this little there. It has the flat side inside and we want to make sure the flat side matches the motor like that. Now the beauty of this little anti-rotation scheme is the propeller cannot rotate off the motor. So you can basically fly this with finger tight little screws, decorative screws. Don't do that. You want to use one of the Allen wrenches from the, from the tool kit to just tighten them, but to finger tighten, don't like tear everything apart because that's not the objective. So the next one is also counterclockwise. Let's see if I got that right. I obviously didn't. There. Like that. And we need two more propellers. I should be balancing these before I proceed. But in the interest of saving some time, let's not do that. We're just gonna put them on here. And again, we always check that the arrow matches the arrow. If the arrow doesn't match the arrow, it is not gonna happen. Because then, of course, the thing will not fly correctly. There we go, we're in business. And now we basically in front of us have the entry level 350 Pro Quad from Valkyra. I'm gonna really quickly grab last year's. Here they are next to each other. And being blunt, I'm gonna tell you one of the big differences. I already told you they've got the APM controller inside, which is a phenomenal controller. You see this thing is talking down here? This thing flexes. Can you hear that? Okay, lots of talking. This one here, it isn't giving. They, this is a much stronger design. The arms are not giving. Everything here is built a lot more solid. You can also see the difference. The new one over here is a lot more, it's bigger. It's got room for this enormous battery inside. So this, the battery should get us about 20 to 25 minutes of flight time. I hope that turns out to be true. So this is the new one. This was last year's one. Um, notice the orange tape. I put that on because we used it on stage and the green light was interfering with the green screen. So they asked me to put red tape on. Here we go. This one is basically put together and the next thing Valkyra tells me to do on the quick start mandate here is let's get the gimbal on. Now for what it's worth, they want to install the camera on the gimbal after I put it on the quad. I'm gonna do it the other way around because it's easier to install the camera while I have it here before I put it on there. And while I'm talking about that, they have this little bracket here. To be perfectly honest with you, I don't use those brackets. And that's because there's these two little screws here. And imagine you're standing somewhere, you're a little stressed, and you drop these screws. Next thing you know, you're not on there. This is, can be done much easier. I'm going to show you real quickly. Like that. A rubber band two times around and just like that the camera is secure I usually use two rubber bands for safety but that's all it takes it's very quickly I have been flying all my cameras my GoPros attached with two rubber bands for years I have never lost one not because of that I've been flying into brick walls and destroyed them but it wasn't because of the rubber bands so that's how I do it I'm going to take this back off. I'm going to remove the GoPro and I'm going to grab the very cool iLook camera. I love the fact that they make a camera with a, there we go. And where did the screw go? See, I'm almost having the problem I was mentioning because these two little screws are really not very big. And even on my table, 
they're easy to lose. So here we go. And I'm tightening this one down. Let's save some time. I'm not going to do the other one. So there you have it. We're in business. The camera is mounted. And let's just see that it's pretty balanced. Oh, today it seems, oh, that's why. <laughs> the cable, it was hanging up on the cable here. So very little things can mess up balance. The beautiful thing is this was built to work with this antenna on. And you should always have pretty much, if you leave a camera in a position, it should mostly stay there. It shouldn't be like always going to the back to the same position. So this is nice and neutral. The great thing is up here you have the angle position and you can use a small screwdriver to adjust if you get the thing and it's leaning this way or that way when you turn it on. Stick the screwdriver into, I think it's the second one, the second little screw here, and twist it until the thing gets level and you're ready to go. Okay, we have installed the camera. Let's slide this onto the rail down here. And here is the quick connect. Just like that, and this is installed. That is brilliant. Almost all quads out there are really hard to install. Let's start with the control cables. I'm gonna show you the back side right here. It says PIT, Roll, and AUX. On these cables here, this one is Roll, so I'm gonna put that in here and I'm putting it not in the front, but all the way in the back. So this goes in here on the far back pin and I'm grabbing the PIT and I'm putting that also on the far back pin and finally the AUX. There. Now, all three of them have been installed, not out to the edge, but in the far back, so away from the edge. This torch my finger. These has been installed and we are ready. The next thing we have to do is connect over here. The cable from the camera is going to go to that little red and black power cable. So that cable here. It's easier when you turn it the right way. Secondarily, the red, two red and, big red and black cables right here. That is the power from the quad, and that is plugged into the camera, or the gimbal's power, and that's gonna supply the camera as well. Done. Here it is. This is ready to go. Let's get the next part of the manual. The next thing we're going to be doing is setting up the radio. So I'm grabbing the radio. In the back here is where the battery goes. There's a lot of plastic bags in these things. Here we go. So right in here, and this charger of course fits into the balance charger that we got with the kit. Battery goes in there. Close it down and you're in business. These goes up this way. Make sure this little angle, this is the tilt for the gimbal right here. That should be in the center position. All the little switches should be up. So there we go. We grab our little monster size battery. And here we go. Now, when you start this up, you don't want to move a quad right away. I always say let it stand without moving it for about 30 seconds. So we're just going to power it and then I'm going to power the radio. I'm going to move this anyway because I want you to see. First it was blinking fast, now it's blinking slow, so it's pairing with the radio. And the light went off and that means, did you hear the beep? Um, that means we have paired. This is now ready to fly, essentially. We need, we're next going to calibrate it. <laughs> I love when stuff works. Look at that. Right here is, we have video. How is that? So this thing, just like that, we put it together out of the box. We've got video on the radio. That means we don't have to do anything else. There's nothing else to buy. 
this is all you need to go put it up in the air, shoot and get video. I do want you to consider, in addition to the iLook, Valkyra have just released the iLook Plus, which costs a little more, but it also produces significantly higher quality video in 1080p instead of the iLook, which is 720p. Now, if you are like me and you love the GoPro, then you instead need to get this thing, which is the Valkyra TX5803. And I know that Dave has both these and he also have a specific cable for this one that goes to the video out of a GoPro. So that way you can buy this from Dave at Valkyra Hobby, at ValkyraHelicopterSupply.com and also buy the $5 cable that plugs in to go to the GoPro and that will give you video down to this particular radio, to any one of the F radios from Valkyra. You can also, and this is one of the things I love about Valkyra, for some reason, and I think it's brilliant, Valkyra has chosen to use the same frequencies as Fatshark. Fatshark is the industry standard for video flight goggles. So let's plug this in. Hey, <laughs> there is video right away. And it's probably a little hard to see, but there it is. You can even see the little icon up in the top of the picture that says that there's no SD card in the camera. The camera takes a micro SD, by the way. So I'm gonna unplug these. Always unplug your goggles so you don't kill the battery by leaving them sitting in. This works out of the box with a pair of Fat Shark goggles. That is brilliant. And if you already have Fat Shark goggles, then obviously you don't need the F7 radio. You could buy a Devo 7 instead. Let's put this down. And the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna try to calibrate this. So I'm gonna put the cable inside, close the back door, and we don't have to see the screen for minutes. I'm closing this the lid over the screen. Now to calibrate this, we're supposed to put the two sticks down and center. So I'm gonna pull the sticks down and center, nothing happened. There we go. Second time I did it, this thing started blinking. And according to the instructions, we're going to stop every 90 degrees for about a second. There. Then we're going to turn it, roll it. So we have rolled it and we're going to turn it clockwise. There we go. And finally, we're gonna turn it nose down and do this again. And for some reason, that light just went off. I'm just gonna keep moving it anyway. And there, at this point, I don't know why this went off. I probably did it too slowly or something. But at this point, it's supposed to blink really quickly. Then it's gonna stop. And once it stops, we're gonna disconnect this. So we're gonna pull it out there. So go ahead and do this at home. And when you're finished with it, you disconnect it and then you plug it back in. Now this is essentially ready to fly. Now let's, as you can tell, it's now right now trying to bind again. And it just finished binding. So let's put this in here. And before we wrap this up, Let's talk about flying with it just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Right now, the lights are off and hopefully I should be able to move my stick, my throttle stick all the way up and down. Nothing's happening. That's good, it's safe. If I push the stick down and to the right, let's see, to the left. So it's pushing the stick down and to the left over this way, armed it. Now the thing is green. <laughs> And let's do a real quick little test. Now they're armed. I'm going to push it to the right instead. And the green light went off, so now they are secure. And you can see I can move the throttle stick again without anything happening. So having discussed that, now you know how to arm it and disarm it. After you land, never get close to it until you've turned off the green light. 
If you get close to it when the green light is on, you may accidentally touch the throttle stick and you may start making chop suey of yourself with these blades. Don't do that. I told you not to. Next, when you start flying, all of these switches are going to be in the up position. And what you're looking for, we're not going to get GPS in here because we have a metal roof, but you are looking for the right light, this one here, to start blinking not once, but double blink, like blink, 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 blink. That tells you you have seven or more GPSs fixed. If you have blink, 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 that tells you you've got even more. You are looking for double blink or better before you start flying. Now you're always going to start flying in manual. That is the mixed key switch here all the way up in the zero position. All right. Now, then what you do is, of course, you arm it down and to the left and you throttle it up very, very slowly until you get to about maybe 40 or something percent. And when you have that, I like to just give it a little bit of rocking on the, this is the roll and pitch stick. And what you will see, if it's sitting on the grass, you will see it just kind of do a little bit of this. And you can see you have control with the stick the way you should have. Now, as you throttle it up further and you keep this pitch roll stick neutral, then you're going to take off and it's going to fly smoothly out of there. That's it. You're flying. So now we are flying. We're going to try to get our throttle stick right about where well, it's beeping here, by the way, but right about in the middle position. And you're going to see the quad hanging pretty much hoovering, having a fixed altitude. When we are there, we're flying, it's responding nicely. We're going to take this switch here, which is called the mix, and we're going to flip it down one click like that to the one or the middle position. In the middle position, now it's GPS locked and the thing is going to park exactly where you left it with the GPS sticks. So now it will hold, you can let your hands go. And of course, make sure that the throttle stays centered because it doesn't fly the throttle, you fly the throttle. So if you want a crane shot, you put it in GPS and then you give it a gently a little more throttle here and it's going to start climbing with the camera. And you can, of course, watch that on the screen. Now, you can fly. A lot of people, for some reason, think that Valkyra cannot be flown in GPS hold. Of course it can. In GPS hold, if you push the stick forward, your pitch or your roll, the aircraft is going to fly. When you let go of the stick, it's going to stop and it's going to stop where it now is. It's not going to go back to where you started GPS hold. It's an important distinction that you want to keep in mind here. So you can fly your entire mission, your entire video shoot in GPS hold and then come back and land in GPS hold. Once you're on the ground, of course, make sure to disarm the motors so nobody gets hurt and it doesn't accidentally start flying again. So you can fly everything in GPS hold. Now, let's assume you're in GPS hold. This throttle stick is about in the middle position and you want to do use the return to home. They call it one key, go home. I call it return to home. We go back to the mix stick and we flip it down. That's return to home. The quad is now going to come back to the starting position and start landing. All this time, leave it with the throttle stick centered. This is a mistake most people do, or a lot of people do, because if you mess with this, let's say you lower it, and then all of a sudden you go, oh my God, I want to fly again. So you take this and you switch it out of return to home and back to GPS hold, but now you have the stick down. Aircraft starts coming down according to the stick because now you are in charge of the stick again. So don't do that. Leave the throttle stick in the middle position when the return to home operates. Always do that. That is the smart thing to do. And that is, so anyway, let's go back. We have landed. What do you do? You disarm it. <laughs> and again, flying in the middle position is GPS. So we're going to take off in manual as soon as you have it at about head altitude or about shoulder height and it's flying pretty smoothly and you have it solid so that it's not going up or down and leave the throttle there and move the mix key one down and now you're in gps hold and you can fly the remainder of your mission in 
GPS hold, and if you let go of the stick, it's gonna stop where it is in the air until you start flying again. You can do a whole lot more with this one. You can use a built-in UPS port right here on the side. You can open that up and you can program it to do some very advanced missions. To learn about that, you have to check out the AMP flight controller and go to their website and learn, follow the tutorials for flying waypoint missions, intelligent orientation. This thing basically can do all the tricks you would want an advanced quad to do. So that's about it. I have one thing left I want to tell you about. I like to use business card. I got this from my dentist and who would think a guy with my accent would have a dentist named Swanson? What I like to do is I like to cut a little bit of it and I use some double sided tape and I stick it here as a little lens hood over the lens. The reason is, I'm sure you've seen videos where the flying towards the sun, the, the video is like flickering, like, like really fast flicker little stripes over it. That is because the sunlight coming through the propellers has shadow every time the propeller turns around. So you want to stick a little bit of cardboard here over the lens so that it gets shadow from the propellers. Sure. So that's about it. When you start it, by the way, you start in this particular camera right here, the little key right here. And I want to tell you, some people like to hook their camera operation to the radio. Personally, I think that's a horrible idea because in my experience, I end up forgetting if I'm recording or if I'm off. So I always start recording on the ground. I fly the entire mission with the recording on and I land and I turn it off and that way I know I have the entire flight. And it's easy to verify because I can see the recording light blinking. So that's just me. You can do it whatever way you want. Anyway, so that is today's show. We have, gone, we have built the quad. We put it together, we have, I've shown you the basic process for calibrating it, the IMU, and you should, uh, in me, when it's new, you should expect to fly maybe five, 10 minutes with it and let it kind of work out its calibration further. And that's gonna, in the, after the first battery, you're gonna see the flying is gonna get even a little smoother, especially because it slowly improves the compass calibration down here. I'm not quite sure the, all the details about that, but I've seen it work in reality, so I'm with it. Anyway, we have the radio here, and this, again, was what I call the real estate agent special. It, in the kit, it has the camera, it does 720p, it has a very successful and good gimbal, and the gimbal is available for sale. You can put it on any quad out there. The gimbal is $125. The entire kit as I have it here with the video downlink, the quad, the 20 minute battery and the radio with the screen is about $850 from Valkyra. And I think this is a brilliant deal. It's a good value that's really hard to beat with any quad out there. So there you have it. Thank you so much for watching. And I'm gonna be back with a flight review of, the, of this one. I'm also going to have a separate video going through the gimbal again. And finally, we're getting some other Valkyra things that I get to take a look at. And I get to test fly the X8 sometime in the future. I'm looking forward to that. So come on by, click right up here on the video. If I can find the right place on the screen, click up there and subscribe, please. And so that you will see our next videos. So go ahead and subscribe and we'll see you next time. Thank you so much for watching.